Hi guys, how are you today? Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Yeah, very good, thank you. I'm still kind of like in this kind of heightened state watching the series. So <laughs> it's a fantastic, phenomenal series. <laughs> oh, good, thank you. No Have you worries. seen all of them? Have you seen all four? I, I am currently halfway through um, episode three. Right. Cool. So um, it's just gotten like so interesting and I've had to like stop it. And even though this is a great chat, I'm like, oh, I want to know what's going on. <laughs> You're like, oh, good. Up, hurry up, give me quick answers. I want to go back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll yeah. Do. Exactly. So I was wondering if we could start by um, introducing your characters um, and the show. Uh, my name is Josh Hernan. I'm playing Alex Hoffman. And uh, he is a uh, technical genius, they say. Um, someone who has lived his entire life sort of surrounded by I think an older generation of people who have fostered his brilliance and who has worked through the scientific community to the very top, working at CERN at the end of his career. And his bosses tell him he should stop working on the AI that he's working on because it's unchecked and he needs to think of the safety of, of actually pushing forward. And instead of doing that, he finds Hugo, uh, or Hugo finds him rather, and they decide to deploy this uh, this new technology into the world of finance, high finance, and that leads to all sorts of problems. Uh, I'm Al Shirelli, and I play Hugo Quarry, who is uh, Alex's best friend. He's a CEO of their company, Hoffman Investment Technologies, uh, and he's the complete opposite of Alex. He's very much from the Gordon Gecko school. He's very much, uh, yeah, maybe that was his favourite film. I don't know. Maybe he still holds a torch for Michael Douglas. I don't know. Maybe he didn't enjoy the Shia LaBeouf new one. Anyway, um, yeah, so he's the complete he's the complete opposite of Alex. Uh, he's very much kind of money-driven. He's Because he, he sort of had his own, he worked in the city. That's his background. Um, and he left the city because he obviously, like, you know, he, he'd sort of outgrown it. And he did one of the riskiest things that you can do when you leave the city in terms of going striking out on your own. And so he he st he starts his own company. He's heard about Alex. He's heard about this kind of crazy geek uh, over in Geneva working at CERN who's got these amazing ideas. And immediately he kind of spots that it could be used uh, for, let's say, slightly more kind of nefarious uh, applications. And so he tracks Alex down. He presents him with a kind of... Uh, uh, sort of proposition in terms of, you know, Alex, I know you don't strike me as someone who's interested in money, uh, but you need money uh, to further your research. I'm interested in money. I This is my background. Let's work together. You, you get what you want to get out of it in terms of you continuing your research, keeping your baby alive, and I get to buy a yacht. <laughs> well, yeah, it's an amazing uh, friendship Good deal. then. Good deal. <laughs> Yeah, and we'll be friends in between. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Somewhere along the line. Um, so how does it go into developing um, this friendship between you two, this kind of chalk and cheese, um, symbiotic kind of business relationship, but also a somewhat friendship there? Well, it's a, it's a friendship based on convenience, I think, in a lot of ways. Uh, but mutual admiration for the fact that, well, I don't know if it's mutual so much is Alex admires Hugo because Hugo is able to do things in conversation and with people that Alex I think thinks wishes he could have uh, he could have some uh, it could be more adept at uh, simpler way of putting it uh, Hugo is better with people than Alex Alex sees that as an asset. Um, uh, if they're going to have a business together, he very much wants you to take on front of house. And Alex wants to be able to kind of continue his research and unabetted and in a great way uh, for Alex and his mindset, Hugo uh, not only gives him the space, but encourages him actively to push as far as he can. And that's not something that he was um, used to uh, receiving from his uh, contemporaries and his elders at CERN. And so basically the, the monster is let loose by this collaboration that uh, the two of us have. 
but the friendship, I think, grows out of the fact that they both can do something the other person can't, and they both admire it. It's like, it's like um, Silicon Valley and Hollywood, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like the guys in Silicon Valley can make all the money in the world and can influence the world in so many ways, but they're still attracted to Hollywood because those people have famous faces. You know what I mean? And like that, that's a thing that they can't buy. And like that's that sort of symbiotic relationship which can create some god awful monsters is is why we've come together as well. And I think for Hugo, it's very much like Alex is Alex is an actual genius. Like he's actually quantifiably a genius and is a very powerful person, even though he doesn't necessarily know it, or he does, but he doesn't necessarily use it in the way. It's like basically he has the ring, the one ring. And like Hugo really wants that ring. <laughs> but no, he's not going to get it. Do you know what I mean? It's like you you can you have it, you can wield it. But I will always sort of like be like, oh, I wish I was the true power. I'm not the true power. I'm the CEO. I'm not the president. <laughs> so so like Sam, that- Samwise Gandhi. <laughs> I think he's my- Samwise to Frodo. Yeah. Frodo. Yeah. I like that analogy. Yeah, I think. But yeah. like a really corporate version of Samwise. Yeah, really like corporate, if Samwise. Yeah. Not sort of like, you know, whacking out a frying pan in the middle of somewhere and you know, frying up some, <laughs> some bacon. No, I say like ordering an Uber or a delivery to yeah, go to like no. a high end restaurant yeah. in the middle of Mordor, yeah. something like that. Yeah. <laughs> There's a, what I enjoy about your ca- characters is that you, you guys both deal with paranoia and fear in quite different ways. Um, as like Hugo keeps it under his cold surface whereas like Alex spirals immediately how, like how much research did you do to go into like fear um, in power and people in power who, who are perhaps the most paranoid people? Research wise it, it seemed it seems fairly obvious to me I mean I've heard, we had a president in, in the US who was dealing a lot of paranoia for a long time and uh, he didn't handle it very well uh, lashing out seemed to be his preferred uh, method of dealing with it, um, but is uh, there everybody I think can relate to the feeling that something is happening to you beyond your comprehension. And some of us turn to religion, some of us turn to, God, I don't know. I mean, like I, I tend to turn to, in, in all honesty, I tend to turn to something more like um, superstition even though I'm not, a, I'm not a religious person or I don't think a particularly superstitious person, but when things really hit the fan, I start to think, what did I, you know, what did I do wrong? And then is there a way that I can fix this? Really things are just sometimes out of our control. But for Alex, it's the baby that he created that is out of control and he doesn't know that it's come back to kill him. And it's, and in that same Frankensteinian way, he's the last to know. And, uh, and it's, I find it, I, I find that sort of, paranoia manifest to be really intriguing and this guy is definitely dealing with that throughout the pro- throughout the throughout the series and throughout the book and uh those steps along the way from i know i'm not insane to everyone thinks i'm insane to maybe i am insane to no 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 i'm definitely not and no one believes me anymore and that that sort of that 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 that, that movement of character was a lot of fun to be a part of uh, it just took a lot of soul searching. It wasn't really research necessarily to any, any individual, but you can see it out there. You can see that madness portrayed a lot in people. Absolutely. Um, and I think I've got a final question. Um, there, uh, throughout, there's a constant thread throughout the series um, that fear is the strongest emotion. What is your greatest fear? Uh, Are sure? This <laughs> being, being interviewed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Uh... I, don't, I think it's more like it's like when when you become a dad, I think there's a lot of like suddenly everything sort of shifts, like a little sort of like, you know, a new lens is placed on everything. And I think for me, in terms of fear, it's it's about kind of her future, like growing up in this world, in this very kind of distorted almost world, you know, with uh, technology bringing it back to this like technology like you know all this kind of like social media stuff and you know i don't understand it i never will understand it i don't get it i don't understand why you would want to share 
such personal things with the world. I don't understand that. I get it as a tool for, you know, whatever, you know, the, our business particularly. I understand why people do it, but it must be exhausting, right? It's, it's hard to, to, to not only act on screen, to act off screen. That's like, that's probably my greatest fear, actually. Acting both on and off screen. <laughs> Like just know, just to leave all that for the for the screen, and then when you're off, be you, just like you. I mean, that's a really intriguing answer, and I want to amend mine that I've said before because I think fearing for the future, for our children's sake, is so universal, and I I feel that way too. That is a gigantic fear, but I try to I try to uh, alleviate that fear by recognizing that every generation thinks they're in the final generation. So it's, everybody always thinks the world's about to end. It's part of, it's, it's inbuilt in us to believe that, um, well, it's because we, we were, we're semi-solipsistic as a species. Like we, we look at things from one perspective, our own, and we can't imagine what the world could be like after us. You know what I mean? So this has gotta be the last generation. But I'm, I'm, I'm heartened by the fact that Every generation has something major to overcome. And, you know, I mean, looking back at the 1950s and the, 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 the certainty that we were all in, on a path toward mutually assured destruction, you know, that the world was going to be annihilated by hydrogen bombs and, and everybody was going to die. And it came very close, but it didn't. And then there's something else to worry about. And right now, there are a lot of things to worry about, of course, but I, I believe I somehow deeply believe that the, 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 the next generation with their knowledge that's been built off of ours will be able to somehow handle that. I don't know if it's going to be great. I don't know if it's ever great, but it is kind of what you make of it. So I guess the longest, longer version is my, my, my fear is, is less, is more like very, is simply losing my mind. I think losing my mind is the biggest fear. Being, being out there, trying to see, trying, trying to explain what's happening to me, like Alex is in this piece, and having no one believe you, and then ultimately knowing somewhere deep down they shouldn't believe you. Like that is, like that would scare the shit out of me. Sorry, the pants off of me. <laughs> Uh, I, I feel that very deeply. Um, thank you guys so much for talking with me today. I can't wait for people to see this show. It is truly incredible, fear inducing drama and you guys do it so well. So thank you. Thanks sir. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? Indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey You